So hi, uh, everybody. My name is Erin Ginn. I'm actually the Director of Admissions here at the Kenosha Campus for Herzing, but today I am presenting on a Lunch and Learn for our LPN to BSN pathway. So this pathway is specifically for LPNs who have and hold a current unencumbered license, um, LPN license, and are looking to go into our BSN program. Um, I feel like I should have a Herzing logo behind me, but I don't because we're my office, but the good news is we won't have to actually look at me very long because I'm going to be sharing a presentation with you. And so you'll get to listen to my melodic voice while watching a great presentation. Um, and then we'll do a question and answer period afterwards. So um, don't be shy. Certainly feel like it's okay to ask questions. Um, I will also give my email afterwards too. So for anybody that watches, uh, that wasn't here live but wants to watch later and does have questions you are more than welcome to email me with questions about this presentation or about our lpn to bsn pathway so um i'm going to share my screen really quickly so sorry that it's going to look weird that i'm looking down because i'm trying to find my actual screen doo, 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 doo. um in the meantime hmm. oh there it is okay Technology is hard some days. Okay, so hopefully you guys can see my screen now. Um, this is just the first one talking about our nursing pathway. So we do have the LPN program here on campus and we do have um, some of you here today that have gone through or are going through that LPN program. Um, so that is our diploma in practical nursing. And then we will be talking about um, how that can bridge into, at some of our campuses, we do offer an associate's degree in nursing. We do not here at the Kenosha campus, um, but it will also bridge into our BSN program and what that will look like. So um, just a little bit of information for you on that. Um, what are some of the benefits of our LPN to BSN pathway? Um, obviously, the first is you could finish in as few as 28 months. And this really has a lot to do with transfer of credit and how much transfer of credit you're bringing with you. So um, first of all, a lot of the students that we see here have been um, kind of picking away at those prereq classes for nursing anyway. So we do see some people come in with, you know, some of the Englishes and the maths and the psychologies, um, but you also get a block credit for having an active unencumbered LPN license that is 24 block credits. So you would, for having your license, you get that 24 block credits plus um, any other transfer credit from any colleges that you have at attended before that could transfer into our nursing program. So it's really, really important that we get all of your college transcripts so that we can evaluate how many classes we can really bring in here. Um, experiential learning is another benefit. Clinic, there's clinicals in a variety of settings and state-of-the-art labs. Um, so clinicals, we, our goal is to always have you out in the field, getting down and dirty, getting that hands-on experience, um, but not all situations, you won't experience all situations out in the field. So that's when we are able to use our simulation labs um, to kind of to simulate those experiences or even to practice some of those experiences um, to a further ability more so than you would get in the field. Um, we are a direct acceptance program, so um, depending on the campus, there are three start dates per year, uh, and actually depending on your transfer of credit, this could be as many as six start dates in a year. Um, so again, getting us your college transcript so that we have all of the information helps us get you um, the most amount of information in order to make the most informed decision, such as how you know when you'd be eligible to start classes with us. Our um, BSN program is a CCNE accredited program. So what does that mean? Um, that means CCNE is a programmatic accreditation. Um, it's an additional accreditation that we hold um, for this program, which is just another way um, to ensure that we are providing a quality education and upholding all the standards um, for you to get the best education. And then obviously at the end goal to, of your BSN program, is to take and pass that NCLEX RN exam. Um, nursing is kind of mean that way, where some other uh, 
some other majors, you walk across the stage at graduation and you are good to go. Like you can get hired in your profession. Nursing is very different from that as many of you experienced in the LPN programs. Um, you, you took an, an NCLEX PN also, which same situation here, you need to pass that licensing exam in order for your degree to, for your degree to be relevant. So that's something that is a goal at the end of this also. We do have a full class dedicated to that at the end of your programming uh, with Dr. Dave Zipenke, um here at the Kinnish campus. And then we have someone dedicated at all of our campuses um, to that NCLEX prep. We tell our students, you know, these, these are the experts in this area. So as long as you are listening to them and trust that, and you're trusting them, um, they are going to get you through this pathway to pass that NCLEX. Um, now we obviously can't take the tests for you. Um, and you wouldn't want us to, but um, you know, we, we can give you the tools to become successful. Next is kind of the breakout of the program. So it is a bachelor level program, which means there are a total of 120 semester credit hours needed in order to complete that program. How does that break out for, um, for nursing and general education credits? So you can see here, um, 45 of those are core nursing credits, 13 are nursing support credits, 36 are general education credits, and two are professional development credits. Um, and then, just like I mentioned, you do get that block credit for your active unencumbered license. There's a minimum of 24 credits in block transfer um, that can come in, and that is in core nursing credit for that LPN license. Um, to the left, the LPN transfer credits, those are some of the classes that are, going, that are going to transfer in. So you have growth and development, intro to professional nursing, um, health assessment, intro to clinical nursing, plus the lab, pharmacology, gerontological nursing, plus the clinical for that, adult health one, or as some schools call it, med surge, and the clinical, and then mental health nursing, and the clinical for that. Um, you also have the option, you see to the right, of dual credit, so a fast track to the MSN. Um, my favorite phrase for us here is, we want to love you, just not forever as a student. We will love you forever as an alumni. Um, a lot of the students that we see here work full-time, um, or, or at least part-time, and many of them have children, are married, or have a spouse, or have a significant other, um, and they're really trying to fit this into their life on top of everything else. Um, so our full-time nursing students are here two to three days per week. There are a couple of semesters that are definitely more um, hectic than others where you can get to four to five days per week between classes and clinicals. And that's something that we completely outline with everybody when they come in for their interviews to meet with us so that you're aware um, of, of what your curriculum looks like before you even begin the program. Um, one of the great benefits here is that dual credit, that fast track to the MSN. So um, here at Hersey, we have an MSN degree with three different con concentrations, family nurse practitioner, nurse educator, and nurse leadership and administration. There are three classes that you can take in your BSN that could be considered for dual credit. Um, you need to have a 3.0 GPA in order to qualify to take those courses. Um, and if you get a, a 76 or higher in those classes, then you'll get both bachelor's and master's credit um, in those classes. So you would earn nine credits towards your MSN while earning your BSN. Um, doesn't mean that these degrees are now tied together. Um, so it just means that you have these credits available if you decide you want to move on to your MSN. Um, so I tell students, if, if you're 1% thinking, you, want, you might want a master's degree, this is a fantastic way to take these dual credit classes for no extra cost. All right, and then next, this is just a sample schedule of how it breaks out. Now this sample schedule is based on um, just that 24 block transfer credit. It does not um, encompass any other transfer credit if you've, took, if you've taken any classes at any other colleges. So this would just be that 24 block credit. So you can kind of see what the different semesters look like. Um, we've seen schedules for LPNs with transfer credit in, finish in as few as five semesters. Um, we've seen it in six semesters, seven semesters, like this is outlined here. So, um, you know, here would be 
probably the most that you're looking at if you're just getting that LPN block credit, you know, and it just goes down from here with any extra credit that you might have that would transfer in. Um, so any questions about that at all? Okay. Um, oh, we do have one over there. I'm not sure if you guys can hear them. They want to know how many clinical hours are required as, um, or, or how many clinicals are required part of the LPN to BSM pathway. So like I mentioned in the block credit, you do get three clinicals transferred in. In the BSN program, there are seven total clinicals. So you actually only have four clinicals left. Um, so with your LPN license, you've actually eliminated three of the seven clinicals that are needed. Um, any other questions about this? These were all really good questions. All right, good. Next, we are going to talk about clinicals. What a great question. It's almost like we planned that, but we did not. Um, so total clinical hours for the BSN is 675. However, you do get 405 clinical hours as part of your BSN, or as part of your LPN transfer, so sorry. Um, you know, clinical rotations can take place in a variety of healthcare settings. When you come in for interviews, um, like specifically at my campus, we have an outline that shows, hey, here are some, like for each clinical that is left, here are some typical places that we see clinicals regularly at these, at these facilities. Here are typical facilities you could be in for these particular clinicals. And here are some typical days. Now, none of this guarantees that you would have clinicals at those facilities, on those specific days, at those times. They are specifically meant to kind of just give you an idea of what some of the expectations are. Um, and also like, you know, on top of your schedule, what could be some days that you would be having clinicals. Um, we do have a clinical coordinator um, that supports you during your time here. So we actually assign clinicals during this time. You are not responsible for finding your own clinicals. We do that for you. Um, and then also we have clinical faculty expertise. So you may or may not have the same um, faculty member for your didactic class as you do for your clinical experience. It could be two different people, but rest assured they are talking to each other, ensuring that what you are learning in class is being taught hands-on and reinforced in your clinical time when possible. Um, you can see some of the specialty areas that we will be covering um, that are left in your BSN are gonna be family nursing, community nursing, and med surge nursing. So any questions about this at all? Again, I'm sorry, they're really quiet. I think um, the question was about Castle Branch, right? Okay, so in order to be cleared for clinicals, Every student does need to have a background check, a drug screening, and um, immunizations and physicals that um, need to be uploaded into Castle Branch, which is the keeper of all of these things. So students um, will open a Castle Branch account. Um, it is the cost of the student to have that Castle Branch account. If you've had a Castle Branch account before, um, that's something that we can look at, you just transferring that over. Um, it really just depends on how long it's been open and the date of your physicals and whatnot that are in there if we are able to use them or if you need new updated background checks and physicals. So, um, but that is something that we have to have cleared. That has to be cleared 30 days before you start any clinical. So students on this pathway generally have to have this done 30 days before their enrollment starts because most of them do start in a clinical their very first semester. So it's important for you to know that. Um, if uh, one of the other questions, and no one in the room asked this, but I, we do get this a lot, if there are concerns about a background check um, or about your ability to pass a background check, that's something that you'd wanna discuss with admissions pretty immediately so that we um, can kind of, we can run a background, we can have you fill out a form to kind of vet and see would your background check be acceptable or not? So being upfront with your admissions advisor um, allows us to have open communication with the clinical coordinator and discuss what options you would have at that point. Any further questions about this? Okay, perfect. So um, admissions criteria, right? We probably really wanna know how to get into the program. Yay. All right, so admissions criteria, um, one, obviously you need an application. So for students that have been here before at Herzing University, this is something we would reset your application. For other LPN students it's coming from other schools that they have completed an LPN program, um, you would start your own new application. Um, this allows, the application allows us to house all of your transcripts and everything together 
um, sync your files together. So it's very, it's a very important first step in the admissions process. Um, obviously, like we talked about before, you need an unencumbered LPN or a paramedic license. And actually, um, let me talk really briefly about that. So yes, you can have an LPN license or um, my paramedic EMT and firefighters, you also qualify for this block credit. So um, I probably have over a dozen paramedics in the program right now. So, um, you know, they, this is a great segue. Paramedic is a great segue into nursing. So that is also an option um, for paramedics and LPNs to get this block credit and go into our BSN program. Uh, then we have obviously your high school diploma. You need to make sure you graduate high school or your GED or anything that's equivalent, your HSED. Um, if you have foreign transcripts, if you received your high school degree um, overseas, you know, we would have that evaluated um, for that. So anything that's equivalent. Um, and then, like I said, we're a direct admit nursing program. So if you meet um, the CUME GPA of a 2.5 or higher and take the TEAS test, which is a nursing entrance exam, it, st it stands for the test of essential academic skills and get a 58 or higher, you are in the nursing program. So um, those are the two main requirements in order to gain admittance into the program. These other ones are supplemental, obviously an application, how we get you transfer credit, and then obviously we want all official transcripts from other previous institutions to ensure that we can um, maximize your transfer credit, but also because you'll notice that the GPA is a CUME GPA, a cumulative GPA, which means all of the colleges that you've been to. Um, if you've never been to college before, if you've only been to that LPN, then we're just looking for that LPN one, okay? Uh, nursing program requirements. So some of this goes back to the Castle Branch on the left-hand side. Why that felt like a hard, oh my gosh, is it left or right? Um, so you can see on the left-hand side, nursing program requirements, CPR certification through the American Heart Association. Um, if you're currently working in the healthcare field, you probably have this already. You just want to make sure that it's up to date and not close to expiration. Um, the American Heart Association does host classes on some of our campuses. So that's always something that you can ask one of the campuses um, if that's available. Or you go to their website um, and check where they're hosting classes too. Uh, Castle Branch background check. We talked briefly about that on the other uh, page. And um, it's definitely something that your admissions advisor will discuss with you. Um, obviously drug screen, um, that has to be done within 30 days also. I mean, can be done no more than 30 days before you start clinicals to make sure it's the most recent. And then, um, health history and physical exam, immunizations, um, there's a list of those that we would give you and then proof of health insurance. Again, if you're currently working in healthcare, you probably have a lot of this, um, but it's always really nice to know kind of what you're looking for. Um, and then on the right-hand side, we talk about commitment. So when we are working with students, um, in, especially in the nursing program, we're looking for those who are committed. We're looking for those who are committed emotionally to being a nurse and financially and mentally um, because nursing school is tough, right? You know, LPN was probably not a breeze either. And that was kind of a glimpse into a BSN program. Um, here at Hersey, we operate on the price model of success. And price stands for professionalism, respect, integrity, caring, and engagement. And that is how we expect our students to interact with us and our prospective students to interact with us. It's how we're expected to interact with our students, faculty, staff, coworkers, and prospective students, and how everyone is expected to represent themselves and Hersey outside of here. Um, so it's a very serious thing. You'll find it's built into your curriculum. It's the way that we just live here at Herzine. Um, and it's not something that we made up. It came from um, our employer partners saying, this is what we want out of future employees. Um, so it's definitely something that is embraced here. Um, it's how we live um, and how we work. So any questions about that? Fantastic. All righty. Guys, we're cruising through this because no one has any questions because I'm so comprehensive right now. All right, uh, let's talk about that T's test. So the T's is um, the test of essential academic skills. Now, um, if you haven't heard of the T's, you've maybe possibly heard of the NLN or the HESI. Um, the T's, NLN, and HESI are all very similar. Um, the T's test is what we utilize here at Herzing for our admissions requirements. 
you can see it's a total of 209 minutes and you can see the breakdown of the four sections. So the T's covers reading, math, science, and English. And each section is timed. You can control the start of every section. Um, you would wanna contact your campus to see when they're running the tests. The Kenosha campus runs it every day, three times a day. I know the Brookfield campus does also, um, but every campus is different when it has their schedule and when there's availability. So it's always something that you would wanna check directly with the campus when that is being offered. Um, cost of the, t of the test is $65 and you are able to take that test two times in 365 days. If you do not meet the requirement that 58 or higher in those two attempts, then we need to wait an entire year before we can accept a TEAS test score from outside of Herzing or before you can test again at Herzing. So it'll be very important to listen to your admissions advisor as to what directives they're giving you, whether or not you are or are not ready for the test or when, you know, are there any resources that you can utilize? So you wanna communicate pretty frequently with them and be really open about how you're feeling about this test and, and your study habits and the time that you have committed to this. Um, students that were in our LPN program before, if when you applied for the LPN, you scored a 58 or higher, you do not need to take the TEAS test again. If you did not score that 58 or higher, you will have two attempts to take that TEAS test again um, in order to obtain that 58. And that is for Herzing graduates of the LPN program right now. Um, and then preparing for the TEAS test. This is always very important. Um, you know, there's prep workshops. Um, we host one at Kenosha every second Friday of the month um, with one of our professors who covers math and science because that's there's a dense amount of information that gets covered in that and we find that that's where the students need to study the most. Um, you know, there's prep workshops available on ATI and other campuses do host prep workshops too. So again, communication with your admissions advisor um, and with the campus to make sure that you are aware of all the resources that are available. Um, study materials that are available. A lot of the times we will use, um, we have some study links. Uh, there's ATI prep courses that you can use and ATI is the keeper of the T's. Um, so that's that. these are all options. Again, keeping that open communication with admissions, making sure that you have all the resources at your disposal. Now, the number one question that we generally get about any of our programs is like, all right, how much is this gonna cost, right? Can I afford to go to school? Definitely. Um, there are multiple funding options that are available to you. And so first I wanna point out here, hopefully you can see my little arrow, around the tuition wizard. So the tuition wizard is something, and if I wasn't in a presentation right now, I would definitely show it to you. It is on our website. Um, it is a fun tool that you can put in what program you're looking at, what campus you're looking at. Did you have any transfer of credit? And um, it'll tell you the entire cost of your entire program. Not by year, but the entire program. And now remember that is the sticker price that is before financial aid, that's before any scholarships, that's before any um, employer discounts or anything like that. So you, that's, but it's a, it's a great tool. Um, when you're trying to get a great idea of what nursing school is going to cost you. So um, like you see here on the left, multiple funding options are available. You know, there's college savings, there's tuition reimbursement from current employers. Um, we also have partnerships with different employers where those that are employed by certain companies can qualify for um, discounts, tuition discounts, just by being employed by certain companies. Um, there's military discounts, active and retired. Um, there's financial aid. Obviously, the FAFSA is very, very, very important. Um, I always love hearing students are like, you know, I'm not going to qualify for financial aid. Well, we don't know that. Um, you know, everyone, for the most part, qualifies for um, student loans. Sorry, drawing a blank suddenly. Um, and you know, it's possible that you may qualify for grants that you didn't even know were out there. So you don't want to have free money overlooked just because you weren't sure. Um, the greatest thing about the FAFSA is that it is not a, I'm taking this money out right now. It is a, hey, I'm thinking about going to school. And so I would like you to reserve my money or like make sure that you set my money aside in case I decide I want to use it. It is simply an application to do so. It is not a, you've taken out these loans. So. Um, 
it's it's a really really important um thing for you to complete in order to go to school and then obviously scholarships you know there are outside scholarships which can be scholarships offered by organizations by employers by chamber of commerces um, all of these are really good resources to look at and then there's also internal scholarships would be scholarships that are specific to the college so like cruising scholarships um, so again everyone that comes through Herzing and, and meets with admissions does sit down and meet with um, financial aid during their first visit here, during their interview. Um, so these are great questions to ask them then um, so that they can cut, the, and they'll go over some of this with you too, if this is definitely one of your concerns about whether or not you can cover the tuition. Um, so they have a, a lot of resources to give to our students. And then like it says there, um dedicated financial aid so everyone has an advisor that works with them everyone meets at least once with financial aid because we want to make sure that everyone has a very clear understanding um before you start the program of what the financial expectations are um so we're, we're very transparent about the cost of school and then cost saving options obviously like i spoke before transfer of credits if you've already taken the class we would certainly want to give you transfer of credit for that class if we can by you giving us those official transcripts so that you're not paying for a class that you've already taken. Um, and then prior learning assessments. So you can actually test out of classes um, if you feel like you have mastered that class or the information in the class, you can do test outs in order to not have to take that class. So probably the number one question we do get about that is like, is there a practice test for those test outs? No, there is not because those are um, students that are doing the test out are stating they've already mastered that level of, um, of knowledge in that class. And so therefore you should be able to pass that test out. If you do, then you get credit for that class. If you don't, you're gonna be taking the class. Sound good? Okay, I know this is always the most fun slide. So it's very exciting. So here at Herzing, um, we always wanna make sure that we are all encompassing. So um, a lot of the admissions interview is about getting to know you. What is it that you want to do? Where do you want to be? What is your dream job? Um, what is your, you know, do you have a dream unit that you want to work in? How long have you been working towards this goal? Um, who supports you in this goal? Um, the Herzing Circle is really, really important in that. Um, we always tell people, or at least I do, you know, I, you know, I'll be your number one cheerleader. I'm also going to be your drill sergeant when it comes to getting into nursing school. If you tell me you want to be a nurse, um, I am going to do everything in my power to try to get you there. Um, but I will also be your drill sergeant. I will be the first one that is kicking in the pants when you're when you aren't doing what you said that you're going to be doing. So it's important that you show your commitment um, during this process. During admissions, I always talk about, you know, think of think of the things you have to get done in admissions as your like your initial homework. Um, so you want to make sure that you're hitting those deadlines. Um, it's a great practice to figure out how to, how to fit some of this into your schedule. Um, and the Herzing Circle is a big piece of that. Um, so we're able to support our students, empower our students, make sure you're on a guided path um, for what you're looking for out of, out of you know, the college experience. So a vast majority of this interview is just us getting to know you and like, what were your past experience? What did you love about your previous college? What did you wish they had that you know could have done better? You know, are there resources that you need? Um, I always ask people a crazy question, like, tell me something nobody knows about you, or what do you think is really important for me to know about you? And I get some of the craziest answers, but I love all of them. Um, Cause it always tells me something that I need to um, help them with. So, you know, I get, well, I'm, I'm really introverted and I have a tendency to shy away from people that I don't know. Okay. That is a great fun fact about yourself because it tells me that, you know, I want to make sure that we get a mentor in place for you before that happens um, so that you don't shy away and you at least have that one person that's on the same playing field as you that knows exactly what you're going through and that you don't, you know, regress and, and shut down and, and not talk to anybody because really your cohort that you're going to be in and your, and your, uh, fellow students are really a great support for you here at Herzing. And so is the faculty and staff and administration. Um, you know, we, we operate with a very open door policy and want you to be able to communicate with us your needs and your wants and your goals, um, you know, weekly. I have students in my office that one were either celebrating 
just that they passed a test or that they passed the NCLEX or that, you know, like they made it through the semester or they, they had an amazing clinical experience. And, you know, we have the opposite. Like, like I said, nursing school is hard and we're transparent about that also. There are going to be times that you are frustrated and that you may be crying in our offices too. And that's okay because we are here to support you. Um, if you were to pull our, my students right now, they would tell you that we are basically like a second family and I would say the exact same thing. In fact, there are some weeks that I spend more time with our students than I do my own family. And that's okay because I love coming to work and being with you guys. I never get up in the morning and dread having to be here. Um, I love what I do. I love being here. I love helping people meet their, their educational and their career goals. And I wouldn't change anything all day. Um, if it means me helping you get to where you need to go. So um, that's kind of what the Herzing Circle is about, or like sometimes we call it the Herzing Hug. Um, it's really easy for us to support you within these four walls. Communication is really important so that we know, do we need to be support outside of here? Or like, how can we help? Um, so do we have any questions about that now that I just had a full true confession, all passionate about what I do and changing lives and yay, and now we're, you're all looking at me weird. <laughs> so it's all true though, so it's totally fine. All right, so how about what happens next? So like, Erin, this has been so great. and it's, I cannot wait to start uh, your pathway program. What do I gotta do? Um, so obviously here are your check boxes. You need to apply. Like we said, that's the number one first step in admissions. Um, we wanna make sure we have all of your transcripts in and all of your required tests are in. Um, and then we want to make sure we start your castle branch and get your background check and your drug screens and that your FAFSA is completed. These are really the top four that will move you through, like that help you move you through the admissions process and secure that spot in our classes. Um, working with your admissions advisor, like I promise you, they do this every day. They know what they're talking about. Um, they want to help you as much as you want to be helped. So communicating with them and being open with them about what you need, you know, we get it, life happens. Just communicate about it. Hey, sorry, I know I said I would get my application done by today, but like my kid got sick. And so I'm gonna get done tonight. Make sure you reprioritize what you're doing um, so that you can meet those goals and, and you can um, get to that next career that you're looking for. All right, so. Um, we close today's presentation uh, with one of my favorite quotes, and that is from Renee Herzing, our president. And um, she was asked the question in all of our meetings, you know, what do we want every student to say? And the main thing that we would love for you to say at the end of this, and we want you to walk away from this, is choosing Herzing was one of the best decisions of my life. Um, you know, we, we love being a part of your journey, and we love helping you along that journey. Um, it's, I think everyone that works here gets up every day and, and knows that that's what they're here to do. They're here to help you um, change whatever it is or, or move forward and move into that next career um, that you've been looking for. So hopefully, you know, if you choose us, that's what, you know, that's, this is what you say at graduation, that choosing Herzing was one of the best decisions of my life. So um, if there are no more questions, and are there, doesn't look like it. Okay, like I said, super all encompassing today. So we just have no questions. Um, feel free to reach out if after you leave here or after you watch this and are like, oh no, I just thought of a question, Erin. Um, you are more than welcome to reach out to me. Um, again, my name is Erin Ginn. I'm a senior director of admissions here at Herzing. And you can always reach me by email at E, oh, so E is an Edward. G is in George, I is in ice cream, and is in Nancy, and is in Nancy at Herzing, H-E-R-Z-I-N-G, dot E-D-U. So I'm kind of a junkie. I check email all the time, even on the weekends, at really crazy times at night because you guys respond. Uh, nurses and nursing students respond to me only at crazy times at night. Usually between 10 and midnight is like the bewitching hour for nurses and nursing students. So um, you will find I do answer emails around that time. Um, but again, don't feel like there is a silly question. Don't feel like you can't ask questions. Um, feel free to reach out. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm super excited. 
Um, anyone that was with us today, um, I will be emailing you this presentation. If you are watching this via video, I mean, you technically have it, but if you would like me to email it to you, I'm more than happy to do so. If you have friends that you think would also benefit from this, feel free to send them. Um, if I send you the presentation, you have the ability to share it with friends. You're more than welcome to do that too. Um, so thank you so much, guys. Um, hopefully today was as much fun and beneficial for you as it was for me. Um, and we'll be talking soon. Have a great day.